I have a very passionate belief that for all of us, life is about making the best of it. And if we do the best we can, then we can hold our heads high. What I've realized is that most of the time we stop here at this point where it gets a little bit difficult. But the reality for all of us is that our, our, our true limits are way, 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 way up here beyond this point at which we feel uncomfortable. I decided that I would join the army. I went to the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. Uh, I got a tremendous amount from the army. I learned a lot about uh, other people. I learned a lot about the importance of uh, leading by example. But after three years in Northern Ireland, I decided that I wanted to be involved in something that was really hands-on making a difference. Uh, and that was why I chose to work for a charity clearing landmines. The Khmer Rouge were an extreme Maoist nationalist Cambodian organisation between 1975 and 1979 when they ran Cambodia. Nearly a quarter of the population were tortured, worked to death, executed. Anybody associated with the previous regime was killed. We'd been given a guarantee of security by the United Nations. We were asked to clear landmines in a certain village. It was actually only my second day in that village when we were ambushed and I was taken prisoner by Khmer Rouge guerrillas. One of the Khmer Rouge commanders said to me, you are a Khmer Rouge prisoner of war now, and that we were totally alone. Um, all the people that had ever been taken back into their territory had all been executed. Nobody had ever come back alive. <laughs> For me, the challenge was not to think like a victim. Perhaps for all of us in life, the challenge is how we think. To not give up, to not be ground down by the incredible oppressive situation in which we were being held, which was essentially hopeless. Eventually, it was possible to negotiate our release. I went back quite recently and made a documentary with Channel 4 and Discovery and I met the commander who made the decision not to execute us. The reason that we weren't executed was because I changed the way he felt about us. I stayed in Cambodia for nearly another two years. I then went to work in Mozambique, East Africa. I'd been there four months when I was walking up the middle of a cleared lane. Ironically, one of the least dangerous things I ever did. And uh, I was blown up by a landmine. It wasn't possible for the blokes to locate. First thing I remember was the huge feeling and sound of the blast and then there was a bump as I hit the ground. I think survival in that situation is about maintaining the ability to reason and as I looked around trying to understand what had happened and trying to control myself I saw that my lower right leg had been completely blown off, I had quite a lot of flash burns, there was a huge hole through my right hand. So I started to focus on all the reasons that I had to live. People talk a lot about the survival mechanism, but that isn't the way that it is. We also have a death mechanism. And after a while, it is by far the most attractive option, but that's true of any difficult challenge in life. It's always easier to do nothing. Many people have felt that my life was over because everything in my life had been about being active and strong and I could no longer do uh, what I wanted to do. Um, for me, I didn't see it that way. I just saw it as a change that I had to manage and I started to focus on the opportunities and I started to work hard to focus on the positives and also to not be beaten by the badness. When I crossed the finish line um, on that first London Marathon, it really confirmed something that I knew, uh, which is that the biggest limits in life are those which we impose upon ourselves. It's important that we think in a way that challenges our own concept of limitation, that we go beyond it. Subsequently, I've done uh, most of the world's toughest ultra marathons, Marathon de Sable, Bad Water, Death Valley. I think for me, the, the pinnacle of the ultra distance stuff for me was running a thousand miles in 30 days. Um, 10 miles more than a marathon every day, 36 miles uh, with the post office and Bernardo's. And uh, that for me was uh, a, an incredible challenge to get up every single day and do it again and again and again. Yeah. 
For more than 10 years now, I've been asked to share my experiences with her, which I've done both as a, a keynote speaker and an after-dinner speaker. Uh, I've also taken that um, at the request of my clients into longer experiences for their people, so we do half-day workshops, which are around getting them to relate these principles to themselves and see how they can do what they do better. Uh, I talk specifically on mindset, motivation and leadership and I do some uh, work on health, safety and risk because that's my background in high risk operations and also do a lot of work on, on change management and how we can change uh, and the process by which we can adapt to new ways of doing things and new thinkings uh, and I do specifically uh, because of my own changing circumstance in life 15 years ago quite a lot on disability. The important thing is to understand what the key issues in an organisation are and how we can take people on a journey that will enable them to do what they do better.